Hi, this is Tanya Sheridan with InAllSassiness.com and today I'm going to teach you how to use our new Star and Sparklers collection from Close to My Heart and create this Oh Happy Day layout. So I've done a few things with this. First of all, I decided to use the wood grain base and the wood grain paper is one that um, is in our annual book. It's available for an entire year and so it will retire in August. And then I'm also using the new Stars and Sparkles paper collection that is available for the next two months and will also um, retire in the end of June. So um, let's get started. Let's first go over the tools that you will need. I'm using my anti-static pouch, which I keep in one of my craft jars. I'm also going to use the silver loose sequins. You could mix it up if you wanted to and use bluebell, but I like the silver the best with this particular layout and the wood grain. I'm going to use my foam tape, my clear shimmer brush, and my scissors. So those are the main things, the tools that I'm going to be using. Um, you might want to also grab a ruler and your paper trimmer. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and build the left page first. So I'm gonna move the right page out. You are going to need your Picture My Life cards and I'm gonna pull those out and show you the ones that you are going to want to search for. We're gonna go ahead and pull both of those for both sides first so that you can go ahead and get those all out. So you're gonna use the four by six card. It has the blue on one side, the Carolina, and white on the other. You're gonna use this one with the polka dot. This is a three by four, and it has the blue polka dot on the back. There's a three by four with a large flower, and you're gonna, you'll see one side has the red, and one has the white. And then you're gonna look for this card that has the flowers at the top and the blue or the sapphire um, lines, and it goes both directions. So those are the four that you are gonna need for this project. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our trimmer, and we're gonna go ahead and take both zip strips off of our paper. So if you're unfamiliar with Close to My Heart's paper, they have this strip at the top, it's called a zip strip, and it has the item number as well as the title of the paper. And then if it's a regular paper pack, it'll include all of the colors of the paper. So those are great. They extend the 12 by 12 paper just a little bit. And usually the strip has some detail on it. Um, so they're great for like small portions and so forth. So we're gonna take those off. Now you can choose which way you want your wood grain to go. I'm actually cho choosing for my wood grain to go vertical. So by that, what I'm talking is about is the pattern of the paper. You can see, if you look really closely, the pattern there. Okay, so we you have some choices, first of all. So with Close to My Heart's regular pattern paper, our paper is two-sided and it's a heavy weight. So you can choose, I'm going to use the floral print, but you could use choose to do the more whimsical fireworks and balloons and stars print if you so desire okay but this is the piece that I'm going to choose is the floral and I just want to make sure it is the larger one so I'm going to glue that down first with my adhesive runner I use the close to my heart adhesive runner it is my favorite I like it because you can glue it down and then you have a little bit of wiggle room um, to reposition. They're also disposable, so once you're done, you just throw them away. You don't have to worry about trying to um, insert a refill and it messes up, and then you have to throw the whole refill away, etc. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, so this is going to go from the 3 to the 10 mark, and we're going to glue this down. And then you're going to look for one of your zip strips from the pattern paper. And it is going to be this piece here. Okay, oops, you know what? I did an oopsies, sorry about that. I did a mirror image. I did not do a mirror image, sorry. So I'm gonna pull that, sorry about that guys. Okay, so we are going to line this up again, three and 10. 
I was thinking I'm so used to doing a left and a right page. Okay, there we go. Good thing my helper caught that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is find the zip strip. And you can see how here it has all of the writing on it, okay? Sometimes there's a little bit, little bit of a bleed through, and so I'm gonna put the bleed through on this one right up against my pattern paper um, because I don't think you're gonna notice as much. You could trim it. I have a really hard time trimming just a tiny fraction of um, a piece. So this works for me. I'm gonna line it up just like that, and that piece is there, okay? So then the next piece that we're gonna actually put down is another zip strip, and it is this piece here. It's like a diagonal stripe, and so I'm just double checking each time I put a piece on because the measurements are a little bit off from the left and the right page, and so I wanna make sure that I get both of those um, pieces there. And this again is gonna line up. Now, if you start lining it up on your left and take it to the end of your page, if there's a little bit extra, then you can just trim it off of the back versus having that extra be in the middle of your piece and it look uneven. This wood grain paper has been very popular. I have really loved using it on all my projects. It's just a nice soft touch. Now you've noticed my piece down here, I didn't catch the corner. So I'm gonna put that down, probably because I pulled it back up. Okay, so then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna see that we have um, these two pieces. These are the Light Carolina. And you're gonna find those. There are four of them, so you wanna make sure that you get the right ones. So you're gonna need a narrow and a wide, and you'll notice that they're all the same length, so they're all good on that. This pattern, this paper was cut from the two pieces of paper, one, one on this side and one on this side, so that the pattern actually continues, okay? And the fireworks are in the same spot. So I thought that was a pretty good um, tip to show you. So the blue, or the bigger piece is gonna go over here. It is lined up with the edge. And then the smaller piece is gonna go at the top. And that also is lined up with the edge. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Carolina strips, which you'll notice they're the same length for both pages. You're gonna take your scissors, and I'm using the dark side. You can use the light or the dark, it doesn't matter. And I'm just gonna snip upward, and then snip both corners to the edges. Just like that. And that's gonna create a pennant. Now, depending on how deep you go, is going to depend on how wide your pennant or your banner is. And then I'm just gonna put adhesive on that. Normally I do it over on my mat, but that's a little tricky with the videos. Okay, so there it is gonna go at about five and a quarter. So you want this little piece here to show. If you want a little bit more, you could do that as well. And I cut mine a little bit deeper than my original. So what I'm gonna do is happy day is gonna be about right here. So you can learn some tricks here. I'm gonna snip this. I'm still gonna put it at five and a quarter. And then I am going to follow it to five and a quarter here because I want it to drop down a little bit more than what I allowed for. As long as it meets in the middle, I know that my sticker is gonna cover that gap and that will make that um, work out perfectly. Okay, so over here we have our three photos, right? Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our Picture My Life cards and we're gonna cut those. So I brought my ruler so I could show you how to cut them. This one is two and a quarter, of course, by three. So that is this card, and we're gonna cut off the top. 
So two and a quarter. It is just going to brisk the very edge of this flower here. So you can see there was a tiny bit and I cut that off. Um, you could go up a little bit more if you wanted to, if you didn't want any part of that, okay? And then we're gonna cut this card. So this card looks like this. You could use the blue or the white side. I do want to pull in the other piece so that I can measure that and it shows that it is four and a half. So we're gonna take this card and measure it to four and a half and we're gonna set that aside. And then this piece here, your leftover goes down here, okay? So that is flat, it goes on top of the banner and it extends outward. So it extends to about three and a quarter, which is about here. I'm overlapping this zip strip, but I also want my corner down here to show. So I'm just gonna make sure that all of those elements happen, okay? Now, I know that this PML card is three by four, right? So I'm just gonna put this here as a placeholder for a second. I want it to be a little bit below four or so. So it's gonna be right about there. And that will give me the positioning so that I can go ahead and put my journaling piece down. And I'm just gonna stick that right here. Now, if you wanted to, you could do mats. I did not do mats, I just did straight photographs. But you could do mats if you wanted to. That is totally a possibility. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this flower out with this picture of my life card. And this one is gonna be, I'm gonna leave the um, outer rim just slightly showing because I know that I can't cut it all the way down and I think that that little detail will make it pop a little bit more. Similar to the sticker that we're gonna use somewhere else. Now, if I were not using the sticker, I might cut it as close as I could so that there wasn't a white, but I like the consistency and I know that there's that border on the sticker. This is a really pretty picture of my life card. I love using these in my layouts because I know that there's extra details that I can use however I want. Of course, they're designed for your pocket scrapbooking, but I think over the years, Close to My Heart has shown that you can use them for greeting cards, you can use them for traditional scrapbooking, um, just all sorts of things. I use some of my leftovers with my lines um, to put notes and cards, that type of thing. So they truly, I order them every single paper collection to go with whatever the paper suite is. I might not use all of them, but usually I use about 80% of them and then I'll use the rest for notes. Okay, so once I finish cutting this guy out, I am going to pop it up on foam. I tend to like the thin foam versus the regular, just because it's not quite as hefty and as thick, and it doesn't have um, as much height. So I'm gonna cut this here and just put that all, all the way across. Don't have to be super, super diligent on getting it all covered, because of course you have the page protector to make sure it stays down. This is such a fun collection. I think that you could use it for so many things. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, patriotic. A lot of people when they first saw it were like, oh, it's so Americana. I don't do pictures of Americana type of thing. But I think um, we have shown and illustrated that there's lots of ways that you can use this. Okay, so this one is gonna come right down. However, position it however you want. I just kind of have it to the edge because I wanted this bottom to show there, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our sticker sheet. Now, if you're taking the class with me, um, we have used this in our other layout. So um, 
there's some of the stickers are already have already been used so we're gonna pull off this title this banner I think it is so pretty I absolutely love it it's the oh happy day I love the shading and the watercolor effect on it I think that those just really pop out and we're gonna pop this up on foam so I'm gonna go all the way across now normally I would use the wide tape, like this piece here, but I tend to use the white wide tape more in my scrapbooking, and so I've accumulated quite a lot of the narrow. So I'm gonna use some of that narrow up on this project. I use more of the narrow on my cards because they're not as big of pieces that I'm trying to pop up. Okay, so this looks good. So then we're gonna take our anti-static pouch and just slightly tap the sticker to the pouch. That's gonna get the powder on it so that it's not sticky except where we want it to be sticky, which is wonderful. And we're gonna pull the film off. And I'm gonna do this at an angle so about like this, make sure that if you have that gap, that you're covering the gap, okay? So then we're gonna pull our sticker sheet out again, and I'm gonna take the word celebrate, which is down in this polka dot space, and it is a pennant. So you can leave it as a pennant if you want, but I'm actually cutting the tip off because I don't want it as a pennant. And that narrow tape is gonna fit, the wide tape will actually fit exactly but the narrow tape will fit nicely. I tend to go over a little bit. So I'm gonna put that in my pouch. And this I did at another angle, kind of inside of the banner, just like that, okay? Okay, so then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out our sequins and there's no right or wrong as far as the sequins. I love our sequins. These have white in them, which I think is really cool. It would go with this layout. So you can use whichever pieces and ones that you want. I tend to use the glue dots the most when I'm attaching my sequins, just because I feel like it is a tighter hold, but you could most certainly use glue if you prefer. There are some iridescent stars in there too. Those are really pretty. If you wanna glue those down, those don't work as well with the glue dots, simply because they are so tiny. Let's see, here's a medium one. Nope, oh, that's a large, I'm trying to find a medium. There's the medium one. And again, you can mix these with the white very easily. So I have one, two, three, and then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna to try to find some mediums um, it doesn't really matter. Actually, these are all stuck together, so I'm gonna use those. I think that the mediums work the best, but it doesn't really matter of the color. And I just put those down here, kind of like um, opposite bullet points. And I just thought that they enhance the journaling spot a little bit. Again, if you don't want white, you could use all silver. But since we have white on this layout, I thought they would um, pop out a little bit more. Okay, so then the last thing we're gonna do on this side is we're gonna pull out the clear shimmer brush. I have some random flyers over here. And we're gonna go over all the little leaves. And I just did one line down the center of the leaves on the pattern paper so I find that it's easiest to start at the top because if you start at the bottom, you're trying not to get your wrist in it, right? And I'm just doing a really whimsical, I'm not coloring them in, just straight down the leaves. And I'm doing both the Sapphire and the Carolina. I think that it really adds. If you want to, you could um, do some splattering with the clear and you could um, add that with the same brush, you could add that. But I didn't think that it necessarily needed it. I thought this was just enough glitter to make it stand out and pop. And it almost makes your paper look like it's like an embossed cardstock. 
So that's kind of a fun, unexpected twist. I'm gonna catch these down here. I did get the tips of the little ones that were cut off, but I think that that added some fun too. Okay, so once I've done all of that, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to my flower and I'm gonna do the same thing. But this one I'm gonna do a little bit heavier. So instead of one brisk brush, I'm gonna take two across and be more focused on where those go. I am going to leave my flowers alone, but I am gonna color the center in, which is kind of a brown toffee and just to make those pop a little bit more. And if you wanted to add more, you could certainly go across the diagonal lines, but I'm gonna leave that as is. Okay, so we're gonna move this page off to dry. And we're gonna come in and do the second page, which is the one with the sassy, sassy truck. We actually have some pictures, which would not go with this layout, but there was a um, antique truck down in a couple towns over at Christmas and a few years ago. They, I think they decorated every season actually. And it was really cool, but um, it was really, really cold and really dark. So my pictures unfortunately did not turn out super, super well. Okay, so this is the um, layout. Here's our leftover stickers. So you are gonna look for your pieces, your pennants, and there's three, okay? And so they're each, if you notice over here, they're each a different depth. So this time I am gonna cut them shorter and then cut them off the top if I need to adjust accordingly. Um, my blue one, my sapphire one, I'm gonna cut very narrow or very wide rather. So I'm not going very deep. If you go in shorter amount, then your pennant is gonna be wider. And I'm gonna do this one, which is the medium color blue, which is Bluebird. I'm gonna do that kind of a medium. So I have a sharper one, a wider one, and a medium one, okay? All right, so we're gonna set those aside now that those are ready. And we're gonna pull in this pattern paper and I'm gonna remember to do it correctly this time. Get my paper centered. Do make sure that whichever way you chose to do your pattern paper, that the wood grain goes the same way as your other side. So if your other side, if you did vertical, make sure you do vertical on this one, otherwise it's gonna look kind of weird. So again, we're gonna come in at three and a quarter and line that up. And it's gonna go about, oops, that's a little bit high, sorry. My, my base was down. Three and a quarter above. Sorry about that. Can't see my lines here. Just like that, okay. Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna do those stripes that we did before, those zip strips. You should have two left. So you're gonna have a short one that's gonna come down here and then the longer one that's gonna go on the top. And again, this one has, the polka dot one had a bleed through for my cut. So I'm gonna part that little part of the pattern next to the floral and line that up. And actually, I didn't do what I said to do before, line it up on the outs on the inside and go to the outside. So that if there's a little bit of a hangover, which this one has, you can snip it on this on the edge. Okay, so this one, um, normally speaking, you would take it all the way across, but I know going forward that I'm gonna cover the end with my um, truck. So I don't have to do that. It doesn't have to come all the way, all the way down because of the truck, okay? All right, so we have that piece and that piece. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're gonna go ahead and attach these guys down first. So again, your narrow, oops, 
So I'm out of tape there. Your narrow is going to go at the top. And your wide is going to go at the bottom. I think I have hit two dead ones all at one time. Hang on one second. Let me grab another one. This is going to go down at the bottom. And when you notice that that does look kind of awkward because there's a space there, but just remember that we're going to cover that up, right? Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do our blue pennant. Okay. So this goes... at like one inch or so, about there, okay? And I'm gonna rotate my piece and slightly lift these guys up. And it's gonna come all the way down under the zip strip, but over this piece here. So it's a little bit of a tricky um, pattern there. Then we're gonna use the sapphire. Now the sapphire is gonna overlap. So I'm gonna pull these up just gently. At the top, it is gonna overlap the bluebird. So hopefully you can see that. Which gives it a little bit more character when they overlap. I think that it makes it look more fun down here. See how it overlaps there? Okay, so then we're gonna add the Carolina, which is our long one. But that one, we're gonna leave a space. And before I put it down, I wanna make sure that I have it where I want and it comes onto the white, which it does. So I'm gonna leave the height alone, pull these back. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space. It doesn't really matter how much space that you have. It's kind of like you're braiding or making a pot holder. Okay, so now we have all three of those. So one, two, and three. Now we're gonna go ahead and push this back down. And if you need some extra adhesive, you can use your extra adhesive. While I have that here, I'm gonna go ahead and snip that little extra piece which makes life so much easier. Okay, now we're gonna come over here and we have this PML card. Now you could journal this, you could position everything a little bit differently and use this for journaling, but I just thought it really stood out and I really liked the way that it worked. Okay, so this is my pretend three by three photo for spacing and we're gonna pull out another one right here, just like that. And that just gives me the spacing of where I want those to go. And I want the top of it to be about six and a half, which is about here. I'm just using it for spacing going this way. Okay, then all of your pieces will build upon that. And I do believe I might have dropped one of my cards. The time to start. Oh, there it is. I didn't tell you guys to get that one out. So you also want to get this one out. Or you could switch. Because this is the second layout, we've already used the cards in the first layout. So you could do Thank My Lucky Stars or any of the other um, sentiments. There's also this Home Sweet Home one, which is really cute as well. Okay, so we're going to put that down. Then you'll notice that this card, this PML card is the same size. And if you want more white, you could do more white. I had a really hard time deciding which one to do because I really liked the way both of them looked. Okay, so this is gonna go on the far edge, right about eight and a quarter. Um, I did not put much adhesive over on this corner because it does slightly overlap the photo, okay? 
Now, for this guy, I decided I wanted it a little bit smaller than what it was. You could do it like that totally, but I also, when I decided to cut it, wanted it even. So I am just cutting a fourth of an inch off of both sides so that the words are still spaced evenly. See how that fits? Because that was important to me. It might not be important to you and that's okay, but I wanted it to be that way. And again, it would look just as nice if you left it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my foam tape to cover the spaces. And I'm gonna pop this up, but see how it overlaps here? So that corner is here. So for the top one, I'm gonna pull it to about right there and snip it. And then I'm gonna leave the rest of this backing on there. Hopefully you can see that under the camera. So that you can lift that corner when you're ready to put your photograph down. So this one here wasn't adhered down, but the rest of it was. And then I'm just going to position this as desired. You can kind of go up or down or however you want to do. And now I can lift this. Once I put my picture down, I can pull that film and that will be golden. Okay, so now we're gonna pull out my favorite part, this little truck. So if you did the other layout with me, you'll notice that that one was a PML card and that one had the um, fireworks in the back. And this one has the flowers. So I thought that it was cute to use both of them, different purposes. And you could use, you know, interchanging however you would like. But I just think that this truck is so cute. Now I wanna go find someone who has one of these trucks and take a picture. Great photo ops. I think you could just use this for so many things. You could do it for flowers. I know several friends who love to take pictures of flowers and have beautiful gardens in their yard. So that would be something fun to do this with. Um, the sparkle doesn't have to mean fireworks. If I had a green thumb, I would maybe do it. But we have no plants because I do not have a green thumb. I even killed hens and chickens, which, you know, I was always told by my grandmother, you could not kill a hen and chicken plant, but leave it to me. I killed them every single time. Okay, so my truck is gonna go right about here, give or take. Um, this is gonna be covering those top flowers a little bit, and you can position it however you want. Okay, so then we have the sticker that is up here, and this is the one that is under the tag. And I am gonna pop that up as well. This one would look really cute if you did it flat, I think, but I like depth. I think depth is really good for me, so depth always works. Okay, we've got our foam. I almost put it in the sequins there. We're gonna put it our powder pull it off and I'm gonna just kind of center it about right there you can do it however you'd like but that's where I'd like it to, mine to go and then I know that this looks kind of busy but remember you're gonna have your photographs here and of course you don't have to do the picture sizes that I have used you could do um, different picture sizes and that would look cute too it's not very often that I do a layout where I don't use mats. I almost always use mats, but sometimes I think it's good to not use mats. And this for me was one of those occasions. Now, I'm doing this one a little bit different than my original. My original one, you can see um, over here, maybe under the camera, that it is the matte finish of the silver. And for this one, I'm just doing any of the finishes. So just giving it a different, a little bit different look. And then I'm gonna create a cluster. So I'm gonna do three up here and then a cluster down here. 
And the cluster is what I call cascading. So it's just gonna kind of, see how it just kind of flows upward using some different sizes. And again, it can be whichever ones that you want. I really like those iridescent ones. I think that those are so pretty. And you might want to wait and decide once you see what photographs you're going to put on there too. That could, you know, totally determine, I just had a little one, totally determine which ones you want as well. When I do the cascading, I really like to try to do some little ones just so that you can see, you know, the sizes from big to small, etc. So let's do a couple more. I think I have a white one I can grab there. Color balance some. And I'm going to do two more small ones. So, whoops. Little stinkers are hard to pick up sometimes. Usually I press them on my finger. They don't always pick up. Okay, so this one I want to go here. And then I'm going to do a baby one up at the top. I tend to save my stars for like shakers because they're just so hard to get down, but you could put them down with glue. Okay, so then those are all of the sequins. So let's put those back in the container. And then we're gonna take our shimmer brush and do what we did before. Now you don't have to go all down in this space because that space um, if you notice over here, is completely covered. So I am going to do the top ones just to give a little bit of that flare. I know that over here is kind of covered, so I'm going to do the edges. And then that's all I need to do except for this very bottom edge here. Okay, so then on my truck, I'm going to do, like I did before, I'm going to do the, the center of the wheels and all the silver pieces. I'm gonna come in and do the window and the handle. I'm gonna leave the light alone. And then I'm gonna come in and do just the details like I did before. Just tiny, tiny traces of a line on each of the leaves just so that they will sparkle and catch the light when someone's looking at your book. And I'm going to come in and do just a tiny circle. Those The brown centers of the flowers really seem to disappear. So that just makes them pop a little bit more. If you want, you could do stickles on the polka dots here. You could trace the fireworks. There's several things that you could do um, to add more glitz if you chose to do so. And that is it. So thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. If you have any questions, um, you can email me at inallsassiness at gmail.com. And whatever you do, make it sassy.